Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. DJ Peter Vass here on Twitter. XRP adds 16,721 wallets in 16 days. As number of wallets on the XRPL hits 4.814 million, guys. This is a record. New XRP wallets being minted on the XRP ledger, uh, which can only mean one thing. More people purchasing XRP, so brand new investors onboarding or current investors creating new accounts to add more XRP to their accounts or to spread up their XRP, so on and so forth. I mean, if you uh, only hold 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 XRP, chances are you're probably keeping it in one wallet. But guys, for those who are increasing their positions to 100,000, 2, 3, 400,000, 500,000, a million XRP, whatever it ends up being, you know, these traders are more likely to uh, create another XRP account to spread up their XRP holdings. So the XRP ledger has seen a steady increase in hosted wallets in recent months with 16,721 new wallets added in just the last like almost two weeks, guys, just over two weeks. This brings the total number of wallets on the XRPL to 4.8 million. This growth is likely due to a number of factors, including the increasing popularity of XRP, uh, the development of new applications on the XRP ledger, and the ongoing Ripple SEC case. Well, we've already got the verdict of the case, so uh, I would think that a lot of those uh, wallets would have been minted back in July, August, perhaps. Uh, the pop increasing popularity of XRP, I could see that as being one of the factors. New applications, definitely. I mean, the more that is being built on the XRP ledger, the more uh, use cases there will be for XRP and therefore more XRP will be needed. So, you know, regardless of the reason, more XRP demand eventually leads to higher XRP prices. Uh, however, it is important to note that the XRP ELA has experienced similar periods of growth in the past, only to see the number of active wallets decline again. Guys, that was in the past when we were, uh, you know, trading more or less in a spec market. I mean, you know, we're coming out of that period. Right now, we are still trading in a spec market. Uh, you know, fortunately for us, maybe unfortunately for other reasons, and this spec market is based on Bitcoin growth and Bitcoin movement. And so, uh, you know, as of the time of this recording, we're only trading at about 48 cents, which hasn't really changed much. I mean, we've seen some fluctuations here or there, but uh, ultimately we're at the mercy of Bitcoin. And this is how we're going to make our money. So Bitcoin has to move first before XRP moves uh, until that real world utility. So we're getting closer and closer to that. Another reason may be that the XRPL is not as user friendly as some other blockchains. For example, XRP users need to create a special XRP wallet in order to store and and use their tokens. This can be a barrier to entry for new users. So that's another hypothesis there. Uh, they talk about this growth and how, uh, if it can be sustainable. I mean, at the end of the day, more development on the XRPL means more XRP will be custodied by various different people, whether it's banks, financial institutions, individuals using XRP day to day for certain transactions. Uh, guys, it's all good. Really, it is all good. It is interesting to see 16,000 plus more wallets just in the last two weeks. So I wanted to thank DJ Peter Vass for posting that. Also, this one, guys, from Michael Branch, British multinational services company and Ripple partner Standard Charter is planning to launch a crypto custody service. They're starting with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Those, of course, are, uh, you know, the two main ones that uh, we, we tend to see a lot of these big businesses start with. British multinational services company Standard Charter is planning to launch a crypto custody service for Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, to institutional clients in Dubai. The service will be available as soon as the first quarter 2024. So be on the lookout for that, guys, if uh, you do live in Dubai or the UAE in general. In addition, the bank has ambitious plans to establish a cryptocurrency settlement network. Standard Charter marked its presence in the UAE back in 1958. So here's some of the history. The company's business gradually increased in the UAE with an opening of several branches. In 2006, Standard Charter became the first bank within the DIFC to purchase its own premises. Nowadays, Dubai is the bank's regional hub for the African market and the Middle Eastern market. Uh, and is the center for its Islamic banking arm too. So Standard Charter, a Ripple partner, we also know Ripple and the XRP token, Sharia compliant. Uh, so a big uh, contender in the Middle East, a big participant in uh, what goes on there in terms of DLT technology operating on the Ripple network. A lot of the banks in the Middle East too are already Ripple enabled. They have uh, many partnerships with several central banks uh, like the Yemen Central Bank, Kuwait, uh, I want to say Egypt and a handful of others. I'm just thinking of, uh, you know, the partnerships that I can think of off the top of my head from that region of the world, the UAE, of course, Saudi Arabia, uh, just to name a couple more. So, you know, we're seeing now a Ripple partner standard charter offer crypto custody. I mean, starting with Bitcoin and Ethereum, I don't think it'll be long before they do offer XRP though. So I wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Guys, another one here from Matthew L-I-N-Y on Twitter, DLT's first major use case according to to Commerce Bank and ING Bank, another Ripple partner. 
cross-country DLT layer for settlement in central bank money. Guys, here's a new report just released October 2023. So uh, from this month, applying DLT into the financial plumbing, a treasury perspective. And guys, need I say it again, ING Bank, a Ripple partner, have been a Ripple partner for a while. So one of the originals here, a cross-currency DLT layer for settlement in central bank money does make sense. Here's just a flow chart uh, outlining how they are uh, going to be using DLT technology. So the distributed model would enhance settlement efficiency, but integrated interoperability model could work as well. So using methods like the TIPS, uh, RTGS, as we know, SEPA Ripple enabled, and then some of these external DLT based platforms, of course, they will all be uh, connected through interoperability. So uh, securities trade, we got bonds, equities, HQLAX. I just talked about them in a video I did yesterday. I'll link that up here in the top right hand corner if you're interested. Uh, trade so cobalt fintium and then digital assets here sdx and d7 dbs digital assets trade finance we've got comgo and contour down there and uh, you guys can see down here bank of england the bank of canada the bank of japan just to name a few and the federal reserve dlt settlement platform don't mind if I do, connecting all these types of uh, all these types of fiat currencies, namely the euro, the British pound, the Canadian dollar, the yen, and the US dollar. So Ripple's got partnerships with all these central banks, not to mention ING. So an interesting update here, a snapshot of how uh, money is going to settle over DLT platforms in Europe specifically. So wanted to thank Matt for posting that. We can't ignore Africa either. They're a huge region adopting RippleNet technology, one of the bigger ones, uh, one of the most untapped ones that have probably seen, I'd say, the most growth over the last five plus years or so, just because uh, they're so unbanked and underbanked. Uh, they had been to begin with. And now we're seeing the adoption through companies like Flutterwave. They're just one of the ones that are modernizing cross-border payments at breakneck speed. This one, though, from Sento Sumo Saba, Africa could leapfrog the West in blazing the crypto trail as it did with mobile payments. That's an interesting prospect. This one from Andrew Whitworth, policy director in the EMA region at Ripple. Here's what he has to say. Um, and actually in crypto adoption by consumers, Africa's world leading. Um, you know, instead of using crypto for speculation purposes, as is often used elsewhere, many people in Africa are turning to crypto to make peer-to-peer -peer payments and as a way to preserve wealth. So this is quite an interesting set of use cases, um, all of which is doing what, as I said uh, in my introduction, um, Ripple wants to do, which is helping to move value cross borders and cross currencies where, where necessary. So Africa's a great opportunity and it has an opportunity to be a great uh, trail blazer um, and to leapfrog the West um, as, it, as it did earlier with, with mobile payments. So maybe, just maybe leapfrog the West. I mean, he's saying leapfrog the West. I think maybe more specifically leapfrog the United States uh, because, you know, the rest of the Western world, um, I'm going to say Canada, Europe, uh, a lot of those countries already do have the regulations in place. So, uh, you know, it's really only the United States that's dragging their feet. Of course, the United States, the most influential country in the West, the biggest economy, uh, the most influential politically, uh, militarily, you know, so many reasons economically, so many reasons why all eyes are on the U.S. when it comes to crypto adoption. And, uh, you know, government has failed to impress, I gotta say. So could we see Africa trailblazing with new crypto rules? This is coming from Ripple's policy director here in the EMA region specifically. So an interesting perspective there. Wanted to thank Crypto Eddy for posting that. Now, I wanted to make mention of this, guys, because this has been floating around Twitter and some have been posting these articles and I feel like over the week they've kind of morphed into something that they really aren't. This was originally posted by Forbes. So, you know, you would think a fairly reliable source. And I even talked about this last week, posted by Ian Bins, the fact that BlackRock and JP Morgan are quietly laying the groundwork for crypto adoption. Now we were getting excited because they did mention XRP in here. The Bitcoin prices swung wildly this week, temporarily boosting other major coins, including Ethereum and XRP. Uh, due to a false report that BlackRock closely watched spot Bitcoin traded fund application had been approved. That went viral, if you guys remember from last week. Meanwhile, BlackRock has become the first Wall Street giant to use JP Morgan's blockchain-based collateral settlement system, part of the plan that BlackRock's executive chief has said will usher in the next generation for markets. So here we have a story uh, discussing the fact that BlackRock is going to be utilizing, integrating JP Morgan's blockchain-based collateral settlement system. Now, we know about the ETH scandal. I don't think we have to go into too much detail about uh, JP Morgan's connection to Ethereum uh, and what is their uh, uh, blockchain-based collateral system, right? It's clearly not RippleNet. However, some are suggesting that because of the BlackRock connection, hmm, that may change. I also happen to see this, okay? So along the same lines, 
BlackRock and JP Morgan prepare to ignite major XRP bull run. Again, the initial report coming from Forbes, but this one republished by the Crypto Basics. So here they say Forbes reveals BlackRock and JP Morgan's plans to lead a major XRP bull run in the market. Uh, they talk a little bit about price here, but they're saying the price will rally. And this is based on a publication by Billy Bambro, a senior Forbes contributor. He noted that the XRP market is primed for a substantial boost to be led by an unusual force. Specifically, Forbes asserted that global financial giants BlackRock and JP Morgan would spearhead an XRP bull rally. According to Bambro, the two financial behemoths are silently preparing the grounds for an upcoming surge in the cryptocurrency market. To back the claim, the senior contributor outlined multiple crypto-specific endeavors BlackRock and JP Morgan have jointly orchestrated. Uh, the report cited that BlackRock has achieved a significant milestone by becoming the first Wall Street titan to employ the blockchain-based collateral settlement program backed by JP Morgan. So again, we're seeing this partnership, JP Morgan, BlackRock, although there's nothing really substantial to kind of back it up. Uh, we've heard recently Larry Fink, uh, you know, outline the fact that crypto is a flight to quality now for investors. In the video I did yesterday, uh, I showed that clip of Larry Fink talking about that, which I will link up here in the top right hand corner. But, you know, nothing else really uh, to substantiate this claim, nothing to really suggest that XRP is going to rally. Now, we know JP Morgan does have that Ethereum connection. Even down here, it says uh, JP Morgan's Ethereum-based Onyx network uh, and tokenized collateral service to convert shares from one of its financial market funds is utilized. And so will BlackRock utilize Ethereum? Well, I don't know if you guys remember back uh, about a year ago, I posted this video here, BlackRock hired co-creator of XRP Calculator, projecting a $352 XRP future price. This is Robert Michnick. And yes, him and Susan Athey did create an XRP Calculator, projecting price in the future. They did that back in 2018. Uh, and BlackRock, guys, there's evidence that BlackRock hired them. If you guys don't remember, I'm going to play you this clip real quick here. I also saw this, guys, from DJE Hudy 555 on Twitter. An interesting connection shared with me, thanks R, makes you rethink the validity of the equation used. Here is an interesting connection, BlackRock, okay, hiring a blockchain VP. Also notice the date here, December 24th, 2020, shortly after the uh, Ripple XRP lawsuit was announced by the SEC. I don't know if that uh, is just a coincidence or not, but this is what BlackRock did apparently back in 2019. They hired former Ripple executive Robbie Michnick to lead its digital assets area. He also penned a paper outlining a methodology for valuing crypto assets. Well, we know BlackRock just got in the game with the Coinbase deal. And back in 2019, they hired Robbie Michnick. Now, who is Robbie Michnick, you ask? And what is this cryptocurrency valuation model? Guys, here is the fundamental valuation framework for crypto assets. This was a report uh, published back in June of 2018. It was Robert Michnick and Susan Athey who published this report. Now, in here, you guys can uh, see a little bit about the author, Susan Athey, uh, economics and technology professor at Stanford Graduate School of Business. She also serves on the board of directors at Ripple Labs and Coin Center, as well as several other technology companies. Her recent research and teaching focus on platforms and marketplaces, machine learning and artificial intelligence, and financial technology and and cryptocurrency. Robert Michnick, MBA candidate at the Stanford Graduate School of Business, he spent time with Ripple in the summer of 2017. Prior to Stanford, Robbie spent three years at CPP Investing Board in Public Market Investments and Principal Credit Investments. He graduated from Queen's University with a BCom and BA in Economics. He was the Medal of Commerce winner in the Queen's Class of 2013 and stands in the top 1% of the Stanford GSB Class of 2018. Two connections to Ripple, and these guys uh, created a valuation model specifically for XRP, the valuation model. We consider an approach of valuing crypto assets that integrates the two primary functions of money, okay? Medium of exchange, store of value. We leave aside the use case as a unit of account, which is less relevant. Our hypothesis is that the leading crypto assets today will come to fulfill a hybrid of the medium of exchange and store value functions, and our model represents an aggregation of these two purposes. In order to quantify these two functions and capture their translation into price, we examine the supply and demand for crypto assets in each use case. In the analysis that follows, we will denominate all value figures in US dollars. So. Let's not forget, this was at uh, this wasn't at the height of the bull run. This was actually prepared and published in June of 2018. So as the market was coming down, um, you know, after we saw all that hype for crypto back in late 2017, 
All right, I'm going to stop it there for a second. I'm going to fast forward this clip because uh, I do want to get to that valuation calculator. And I want to remind you guys, BlackRock hired this guy. So let me just fast forward this a little here to the calculator transaction demand here the storage demand so i will link this in the description of the video for you guys the other thing though that i think is important to note is that they created this calculator this calculator is based on the valuation model developed by susan athy board of directors at ripple and robert michnick stanford graduate school of business and guys here is the calculator now i will link this in the description of the video what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the examples that they give here, okay? I'm not even going to put in outlandish examples. So just really wanted to bring up this calculator. I'm not gonna go through, uh, you know, the example they give, where they get a $352 XRP, but if you do wanna watch this video, I will link it up here in the top right-hand corner. More though to the point that BlackRock hired Robert Michnick. So there is a connection to XRP with BlackRock. JP Morgan though, using Ethereum-based Onyx, it does get me scratching my head. And then we get tweets like this, guys, from Black Swan Capitalist Versan here. Unbelievable, I covered a report on BlackRock and JP Morgan increasing their position in XRP. So, I mean, it's plausible. BlackRock increasing their position. I'm not entirely sure about JP Morgan. I mean, maybe they wanna hedge their bets against their own technology. Uh, so I could see that being realistic. It was removed, though, he says, after minutes of gaining traction. This is exactly what I've been warning about. Institutions will always lie to the masses and keep them distracted with Bitcoin. So Daniel down here asking for a source and uh, Mr. Hubert calling Black Swan capitalists on this. GPT-4. JP Morgan's move into the world of cryptocurrencies, particularly XRP, is noteworthy for several reasons. He's saying that this was created by an artificial intelligence program, by the way. First and foremost, it signals a growing acceptance of digital assets by traditional financial institutions. XRP's focus on facilitating international transactions aligns with JP Morgan's global presence, potentially offering a more efficient means of cross-border payments. Uh, you know, it sounds like a very nice, clean write-up. And Daniel asking, is this for real? Mr. Hubert says, doesn't mean JP Morgan doesn't use ChatGPT4, but I smell this writing style from miles away. It is my profession. So he is saying, you know, there is no real source to this information other than AI technology. Uh, again, we're just seeing screen grabs here with text being created. No source has been given, which still, you know, kind of questions the legitimacy of this claim here. Is BlackRock working with JP Morgan? Still no fundamental evidence to suggest this. Uh, however, independently, we have seen ties between BlackRock and not just Ripple, but somebody who has actually predicted the price of an XRP token, future price model, along with Susan Athey, namely Robert Michnick. And then there's JP Morgan, of course. Ah, yes, JP Morgan, using your and protecting your Ethereum-based technology, using Gary Gensler as your guard to help your big banking institutional succeed in this transition. I'm going to have to say, guys, although there is evidence that BlackRock is using XRP. I'm not entirely sure that we can believe this 100%. That's not to say that a bull run isn't going to be ignited. But again, guys, before that, we still have to see that next spec bull run. And cash out, once we see gains from that, my subscribers on Patreon already know what I'm gonna be trading and I'm gonna be opening up my XRP portfolio too, naming my targets, showing you guys my trades. I also have a $10,000 plus portfolio that I'm trading there, all types of different altcoins that I think are going to pump really hard this coming bull run based on different kinds of metrics. Yeah, some are meme coins, some do have real world utility, but we're looking to make money this time around. So if you guys wanna follow me there, you can too, patreon.com slash working money channel. That's just my opinion, though. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.